Hey guys, welcome back to the channel on a brand new video on Marvel Contested Champions. You are not deceived. Yes, as you finish one video, Kabam decide to get active with what they do. And big shit goes down like this thing here. This is from a video, if you've not seen it, it's the three years of champions video, which is in the description. It's a link to it on Marvel Contested Champions YouTube page. And yes, Modok is definitely entering the game. And a whole host of things are happening, as well as new characters are coming left, right, and center. Modok is not alone, and Taskmaster does kind of support him with regards to coming into the game, which, again, is pretty cool to see two new champions. This, is obviously, is going to be next month, and the event I'm going to cover in another video. I'm just going to focus this video solely on Modok and Taskmaster with regards to their abilities and talk further about the champions. Now, Modok and Taskmaster aren't alone. They're being joined by Void and Sentry. Unfortunately, not enough details are really known about Void and Sentry, which probably indicates that they are next month, say a January release for this. But obviously what we know is obviously December, we're going to see Modok and we're going to see Taskmaster coming into the game. So let's have a look at them. And before I go anyway, I just want to shout out JJW and the unofficial Marvel Contest of Champions Discord, which has a live podcast each week and the link is in the description to that. So let's start off with MODOK and MODOK is a science, which is great. I was really hoping he would be a science to really kind of push further with regards to the science roster that we have in Marvel Contest of Champions, which of late has been incredibly flat, especially for 2017. MODOK's champion abilities seem to be completely all over the place, but that's really the, the kind of generic scheme and makeup of the champion. In that it's all about flux and it's even kind of like said that flux is a seemingly unpredictable thing so that gives us no real kind of indication of what it does well except we're looking at a lot of things with regards to bonus and improvement for the champions so attack rating block proficiency critical damage power rate ability accuracy to name but a few of the things that kind of are beneficial for this character with regards to an attacking side of things force field seems to be something that, that's quite interesting yet a bit frustrating um number one side of things yeah it's great because it's uh, all about uh, power gain rate is reduced which is good the next thing is we see something with regards to it being taken on from one fight to another with regards to force field recharging so that is uh it's probably hence why that we see in this image here that there's a zero there this must be when it's then brought over from the previous fight to then uh there or say sorry how many people are alive with regards to the enemy team i don't know how it kind of set, says sets that really is it kind of a case that goes right well um you're using him you've gone for one fight say here for example and then there's one two three four five six left and then obviously that is then uh reflects the next thing there so if you're going up against something in a quest form and there's a exponential amount does it then classify for how many uh, are left and alive or is it on any given path i'm not 100 percent sure with regards to that information or is it more applicable to say things with regards to arena fights one thing i really like and it's probably one of the the kind of crowning jewels is seeing this here the sp1 silence now i've been looking for a good champion that is going to be beneficial from an l1 point of view so if you're struggling to get anything further than l2 for whatever reason you want to give them fight you need something that is going to be quite powerful and even to go as far as to saying that reversing health and power is pretty darn decent especially if you consider like going up against the collector that regens quite a bit right to the end obviously when he's getting those uh, those crazy ancient buffs so this L1 is called Silence and it's enemy abilities that grant power or health are reversed for the duration of this attack up to 0% of what they would have gained or lost instead. And obviously it would be good to get find out with regards to what is that, that, that percentage because that is going to be a real thing in order to kind of benefit you in any kind of given fight, especially if you're going up against something like All or Nothing. Having a consistent L1 that's going to be able to take down stuff is going to be pretty nice. Which is attack does not generate any power for opponents so extra very very nice the l2 is still pretty cool um it's hard to really kind of get an idea without putting this into any kind of game situation or seeing the champion with regards to the way it works so i will be excited to see how this does work and what kind of a level of damage we are seeing application wise to any enemy and flux and how well that's going to be a big factor in the damage and is it going to be crazy like we're going to see like uh, five to six symbols just kind of rotating through with regards to numbers 
or is it going to be a case that we it's going to be a randomizer similar to say joe fix it when you start the battle they kind of double down are we going to see something randomly pick up and it's going to be there and as soon as that goes off then there's another one being put on this is very difficult to kind of pinpoint but l2 is all right we don't know how the extent of bleed will be is this going to be extended or improved bleed is it going to be as powerful would it work well with deep wounds a lot of questions still need to be asked with that and the l3 really becomes a bit of a mystery in that there is a percentage chance to inflict a random non-unique buff or debuff even so what that will be will it be just randomized so it's going to be either a poison is it going to be a bleed is it going to be whatever it's going to be it's hard to really say the debuff is going to be you know weakness power lock we don't know what this kind of extent of uh, debuff um will be the general idea of modok's signature ability really falls on what we discussed a moment ago with regards to the you know as soon as modok has started a fight or is in a quest of a fight uh, or a path of a fight then obviously if he's completed a lot of fights then he's going to gain in power and magnitude with regards to what he kind of delivers and in likeness it's similar to like mephisto and also morningstar so this obviously symbol is very important from previous fights to what the character then brings over to future fights so modok gets an increased block proficiency for each class defeated within the same quest and then there's unique things with regards to any other class except for skill because he's kind of rude to skill why bother they're not even superhuman how dare you and once modok has defeated all six classes all bonuses are applied each fight that's pretty cool and does mean that the signature ability is going to open up more things and make this champion more exciting to play which is kind of putting him towards the line of like going well he's not going to be one of these ones that people go to whilst unduped it will be a case that he will be awakened and then would be more of a fighting force and more of a kind of a a big linchpin with regards to the way that you play certain things especially questing i'm not quite sure with regards to seeing this if i could see him as an end game content guy but certainly one of these kind of like main and big players with regards to realm of legends doing things with regards to say questing like a maybe even an excellent act five kind of uh, champion choice and with regards to most champions you'd say that the synergy make up the man or the man in the chair or the big head in a chair so to speak and these things really kind of give great buffing to him obviously taskmaster gets increased bleed uh, there's the force wheel charges with regards to there being a recharge faster we then got less poison damage which is which is good uh, we then got a uh, maximum flux increase by 25% which I think is going to be quite important with a Gwenpool and a Deadpool but obviously it's it's a case of like more likely people have Gwenpool as opposed to Deadpool unless you're referring to a three star Deadpool which obviously then the case that's fine if you have him and then we've got Ultron so yeah helpful things with regards to making Modok a little bit more powerful than they are I think my main takeaway and kind of point with Modok is that I'm excited for his signature ability which I think is unique and going in the new line that Marvel Contest of Champions is with Mephisto and Morningstar which make it original with regards to a playing process with regards to a full fight in the quest so the amount of fights that you're doing what's happened in the previous ones what you defeated and obviously that's going to make the champion a lot more powerful the SP1 as well is going to be something that I'm going to really look out for and if I really want to go for the champion which I might I might consider doing some uh, some feature grandmasters for this guy but then obviously the hope is that i can get him awakened in order to really utilize those uh, those signature abilities otherwise it's it's not like as hyped as i wanted to with regards to modok however though i feel that that like i said if he's awakened he is going to be pretty darn decent and maybe even a great contender for doing further difficult content like master mode or even doing stuff with act 5. next one up to the plate to be discussed is taskmaster this is a champion that has been labeled as being skill and that is correct taskmaster has indeed been announced as being skill as we can see here with regards to this being taken as a still from an event quest in next month's event i think a lot of people will still be on the fence with regards to the classification and they may even look for this champion to be a science over being a skill however though obviously command for whatever reason have put him in as a skill and i don't think there's any really changing that obviously as we know there's mentions to soldier super soldier serum and uh, some other things which could push him towards the line of being uh, science however though there's things with regards to you know knowledge of his own memory so i think the the kind of logic here is that he thinks he is a skilled mercenary with these powers to begin with however though that is not the case based on his physiology and how he actually started out 
which then previous with my knowledge would then go right okay i'm science no you're not your skill um without kind of going too much into the source material and like confusing everybody he is skill and that's the way it is so let's talk champion ability and exploit weakness this is something that is going to be incredibly unique and also maybe even uh, a thing to take down your spider-mans your nightcrawlers and also with the auto blocks like uh, thor ragnarok as well as even uh, modok who we've just discussed as well as medusa so this is going to be pretty darn cool so how this works taskmaster spots a weakness in the last attack his opponent attempted which can be exploited by striking the opponent for the same attack with two seconds so say i do a light attack i block and then obviously i do a light attack back or maybe i parry and then do a light attack back it depends how you want to play this to make it as easy as possible after the exploit weakness is triggered or expired it goes down uh, it goes on a cooldown for two seconds so successfully exploiting a weakness instantly deals direct damage which is cool it's cool to deal direct damage um, you know, there's no kind of. Uh, it's good to see a full amount of damage there um, against an enemy. An attack then will trigger exploit weakness with not trigger passive evade or auto block. So obviously things that we just said there with those champions of Nightcrawlers and your your Spider Mans as well as the auto blocks from your Modox, your Medusas, your Thought Ragnaroks. That is brilliant and totally unique. And the heavy attack seems to be something with regards to like a recharge, which is pretty cool. As well as it does benefit if you're doing lots of these uh, exploit weaknesses. It means that there's going to be a point where you will avoid any incoming attacks for the first two seconds of charging that attack. So that is, again, pretty unique. And it's like uh, anything you can do, I can do better with regards to like the enemies. So your Spider-Mans and these other ones that are, you know, being incredibly difficult up to this point. So it's good to see these diverse champions having a go at those ones that are a little bit annoying at times. Obviously, some of the stats, attributes, information, which is uh, here, hasn't been fully kind of like done. So it's like annoying to kind of see what they're going to call that. But in any case, these two are pretty, pretty amazing. Like we're looking at you put a load of bleed on this fella and he is going to be immune by the end of it. Like it says it's that if the debuff potency re reduction re reaches 100 percent, Taskmaster becomes immune to debuffs. So obviously the extent of, uh, of debuffs you're putting on the champion, you're going to see potency reduce down that debuff uh, quite considerably. So if you're going to take Gwenpool against some, a champion like this or kind of expect uh, to put a load of debuffs on him, then he's going to be pretty pissed off. And at the same time, he's going to become immune to them. Now, it doesn't say like the extent of like how long that lasts to fight for, because it could be a small time. It could be uh, a long time, the entire duration of the battle. And it may mean that you have to kind of change the way that you kind of uh, you kind of attack this champion in the future, it may be rather than having a champion that's got debuff effects, you could even be using a less than average champion in order to kind of just see yourself through to the end of the battle against him. One thing that's very self-evident from this information here with regards to the attribute is that he is able to control a lot of the ability accuracy for a lot of things if you're fighting against him. Obviously, it's best if you've got him to fight against the enemy because then you're able to, you know, obliterate ability accuracy. But it is going to be a little bit frustrating at times to do that. But obviously, it can be str when you stri strike him, you can reset some of those things. So that's 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 cool. Remember, obviously, special attacks, you know, get your abilities back. Taskmaster's special attacks look to punish and reward at the same time for debuff effects being on the enemy as well as debuffs being on Taskmaster. So he, in a sense, is going to be this real all-out brawler. So it doesn't matter if he's got like negative effects. It's kind of like the kingpin type thing, except for it's kind of like an all-rounded thing. So punishes against you and also rewards for himself if he's got punishment on himself. Kind of a weird thing, but that's like it's cool. Again, unique stuff in the game and unique champions. So obviously, if he does bleed, then it's going to be more per debuff triggered on the opponent fight, and then there is uh, things to be gained for attack for each debuff active on either taskmaster or his opponent so yeah okay rewarding against you know punishment on the enemy and also kind of punishment on him so that's pretty cool and esp2 follows on the same way with regards to rewarding against debuff effects being on and also on the enemy so that's that's cool and then sp3 looks to then trigger off a exploit weakness if it is uh, if it's if it's there so that's cool as well to kind of see something that's going to trigger it 
uh, rather than trying to concentrate on what the enemy is doing and say trying to replicate the uh, the kind of the fight sequence fight pattern so light for light hit uh, triggers sort of thing but this final point is the coolest of all so it triggers something which is all non-unique debuffs triggered on taskmaster this fight onto his opponent and then all non-unique buffs triggered on taskmaster's opponent this fight on taskmaster all of which last two seconds now that could be a real telltale sign for you know a really decent champion if you're kind of up against the fight where you're kind of taking a lot of debuff effects at the same time your enemy is getting a load of buff effects you're going to be like oh, you're screwed for two seconds because i'm getting all of yours and you're getting all of mine so say you're up against let's go with cable and you get true strike and you get uh, regeneration and that gets put onto you and then he gets in in return incinerate and um I don't know a bleed or, or something something applicable to, to to that so it's a nice little swap -a rooney and uh, they're getting punishment and obviously you're being rewarded so taskmaster signature ability goes further on for this uh, ability accuracy type thing and kind of then reducing down the enemy and kind of improving exploit weakness all the things you've really discussed all, all over the different parts of the champion it just kind of heightens it more more thoroughly Either way, it does mean for some kind of great fighting against certain enemies, which is going to be incredible. You're going to see maybe this champion used in circumstances against champions that their ability is just so annoying for you, like uh, passive evades and evading in general, that you're going to go, right, this champion is brilliant for that. If you think that certain champion is like, oh yeah, they're amazing with the like going against Wolverine and kind of going like, um, obviously is a skill, dis a skill disadvantage against uh, mutant but at the same time if you're reducing down the healing factor then that can be pretty cool with regards to usage against that kind of scenario but it applies for every champion in the game that is obviously signature ability is unlocked that makes them a lot better so you're going to have a lot of fun with this champion in he's going to be brilliant even though I should be focusing solely on Taskmaster as soon as I read this, I was like, oh my god, that is brilliant. That is absolutely fantastic. Hawkeye. Okay, this is the thing, right? I have said this in a previous video. I did a Hawkeye video, and I did make the point with regards to his kind of hemorrhage being rather than a one per fight thing. It needs to be a lot more frequent, especially if you want to take him into um, like big scale battles. And like, this is something that I really love. So, Hawkeye. Special 3 gains 100% chance to trigger hemorrhage without counting towards Hawkeye's hemorrhage activation limit. Ah -ha -ha. Cannot believe that, but that is so cool and really wants, you know, I really do fancy getting Taskmaster for, for solely for that synergy group because that is just something I really want to try out and just see because I've got Hawkeye, I've increased the levels of him, I've got him up to rank 4 and tempted to get him to rank five but i think if i wanted to use him more consistently and with like questing a lot more and especially like master mode l1 and the fact that i can then build obviously on an l3 as well and kind of do some kind of power game with that i think i'm going to make a nice recipe for a decent synergy soup that's going to be um gonna it's just going to put hemorrhage on each time um like 100 percent. that's amazing love it and taskmaster isn't alone with regards to this i did jump the gun but if he's got an exploit weakness on target and special attack is kind of there, all his special attacks become unblockable. Again, that's pretty amazing in any case. And then when you go into Professor in Crime, he gets instantly exponential power, max power each time he exploits a weakness. Great, that's again beneficial for the champion with regards to his power gain. And then with regards to Termination Contract with Moon Knight, again, X percent uh, chance to evade against his current exploit weakness target so again beneficial for the champion finally with winter soldier uh, the exploit weakness target attack has a percentage chance to become unblockable so you know again helpful helpful for the uh the, the kind of champion taskmaster you know looks and sounds brilliant and i see so many applications in so many areas that is going to make him just a, a real a nuisance as well because if you think about it, putting him in Alliance Wars as a defensive champion, that's going to be frustrating. So if you're going up and going like, yeah, I'm pretty confident with my champions are offensive. I'm going to use against this. And then it's a case of like, mm. the same way that you can use them for an attacking sense and going like Nightcrawlers and also Spider-Man. You know, no way. I've got this guy that's going to reduce down your signature ability, which is based on, um, well, mainly for Spider-Man, obviously, with regards to that evading side of things. So... 
no more Spider-Man for that. But also, one thing that I have been missing and haven't really said is that maybe, again, he could be used in the sense of, like, taking down Limbo. Because it's been the case as well that a lot of players have put magic in. And, yeah, okay, Limbo is, uh, is a good ability. But at the same time, if this is reducing it down and taking it off and is as well... Uh, an effective measure w with regards to punishment of, uh, of of certain things, then that is going to be pretty darn cool to kind of put this champion up against your magics and your people that are going to be a right pain in the ass in the game. So I'm pretty excited for both champions, but I think Taskmaster kind of edges it with regards to like it's Hemorrhage and, and Hawkeye as well as the the champion in general and the way that he is able to do stuff similar to Kingpin, but at the same time. He's got his own unique stamp, which I absolutely love. So that's been an overview of both champions. And um, like I said, I'm really excited for both. More of so Taskmaster. Modok, yeah, he's cool. But yeah, Taskmaster is going to be pretty darn decent. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Subscribe for more Marvel Contest to Champions based content. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below with regards to these two champions being put in. And yeah, I shall catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye for now.